so you can play. Mini War Gaming's Reign of Chaos! Mini War Gamer Dave here from MiniWarGaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to the Reign of Chaos. In this video, we're going to be focusing on Helldrakes and how 7th edition has affected them for the good and for the better and for the worse. It's more so for the nerf, to be absolutely honest. They've been nerfed. However, there's six things that you need to know before you start to field Helldrakes. If you don't have a Helldrake, if you're thinking of getting a Helldrake, you got to know these things before you get one. Make this part of your decision. Number one, Jink. Helldrakes have the Jink special rule. Why? It's because they're a flyer, and all flyers have the Jink special rule. When you choose to Jink, you get a 4-up cover save, and you must declare that you are Jinking when you are the target of a shooting attack, and before any two hit rolls are made, that's when you declare it. Now, when you do Jink, you can only fire snapshots in your following shooting phase, but you can move as per normal, so that's okay. So if you arm your Helldrake with a Bale Flamer, then you can't shoot it if you jink. Hades Auto Cannon, you can, you can snapshot it, but Bale Flamer, no. And that's the thing with a Helldrake. You can only arm him with either the Hades Auto Cannon or the Bale Flamer. He's got one of two options. That's it. Number two, hover. Helldrakes can hover. See, now that's just amazing because that means they can hold objectives. That's a big deal. They are able to travel really far, really fast, I've done it, I've seen it, it's been amazing, it's been terrifying for the opponent, I just absolutely love it. When you are in hover mode, you're treated the exact same as a fast skimmer, which means that you can move flat out 18 inches. You get a lot of mobility when you're hovering as a Helldrake. Number three, firing arc. This is one of the nerfs, unfortunately. Before, it used to be 360. Now, it's 45 degrees from the barrel of the gun which is typically coming out of his mouth, and it's treated like a hull weapon, hull-mounted weapon. So, according to the rule book, it's 45 degrees. That just stinks, man, let me tell you. Now, you're able to get around that somewhat with the Bale Flamer because it's a torrent, and you can have the smaller end of the tip of the template closer than the big one, and you can flip it around, but still, 45 degrees. Template weapons count as ranged weapons, and it says that treat the ranged weapon on a Helldrake as a hull mounted weapon. Same thing goes for line of sight of the weapon. You treat it from the gun, which is in his mouth. Number four, Vector Strike. This is something that really affects the Helldrake. He used to be able to do this a lot, and he had a lot of fun doing it. Now, not so much, because it's been nerfed. If you are Vector Striking, and you're targeting a unit that's on the ground, you only get one hit now. Before it was D3 plus one. Now it's one. Not so great. Now it says that it's resolved at strength 7, so that stayed the same, that didn't change at all. That's what your vector strike strength is when you're a Helldrake, but still. Ground units, whether it's a vehicle or non-vehicle, one hit. If you are a zooming flyer or a fly monster's creature, then you get D3 hits. So that's not as bad, but still. The majority of times when I was vector striking, it was on ground units, and so that's not so great. Now the one improvement that they made there is that it used to be AP3, now it's AP2. Ignores cover, it's still the same rule, but not so much. That's a bit of a nerf. That is a big nerf. I'm not gonna lie, I'm upset about that. That's just one of those things that, why did they do that? But they did, and that's what we gotta, we gotta live by it, right? Five, demonic possession. This is a big deal because vehicles in general have been buffed. So, if we all recall the old vehicle damage chart, if you roll the six, you get explode, right? Five immobilized, four weapon destroyed, two or three it was stunned, one was, oh no, actually, I think it was three stunned, and then one or two was shaken. Now, it's one to three, you're shaken, four is stunned, five is weapon destroyed, six is immobilized, and a seven is explodes. The chances of you rolling a crew shaken or a crew stun result is greater now. 2 and 3 chance provided that you are shooting with a weapon that is an AP2 or 1. And you're not shooting at an open top vehicle. Now how that affects demonic possession. Demonic possession, you roll a dice after you take a penetrating hit and you get a stunned or shaken result and on a 2 plus you ignore it. That is a big deal. 
if you're a rhino and you roll that die and you get a one, then you're supposed to like eat a guy inside and kind of suck him away into the warp. But for Heldrakes, since they aren't transport vehicles, you roll a two plus, you ignore the results of crew shake and crew stun. And number six, special rules. These are some things you're gonna to wanna to know before you get a Heldrake that will help you decide on whether or not you wanna get a Heldrake. One of them being Demon Forge. Demon Forge is great because you declare it, you get it once per game, and any failed penetration hits on a vehicle or any failed two wound rolls, you get to re-roll them. Now in the turn that you activate your Demon Forge, you gotta roll a die, and on a one, you lose a whole point, and you can't save it with your invuln save. Did I mention that your Heldrake is also a demon, which means that you get a five up invuln save and you cause fear. The other thing you get as a Heldrake is it will not die. At the end of your turn, you roll a five plus, you regain a whole point you lost earlier in the game. Your Bale Flamer, which is a torrent weapon, is strength six AP3, it's got the Soul Blaze special rule. It's a good marine killer, it's a good horde killer. The devastation that a single Heldrake can do in a single game is devastating. I don't care if you thought that that phrase was silly, but it's absolutely true. Yes, Heldrakes have been nerfed, but have they been nerfed to the extent that you wouldn't bring them in a game? I would say no, you would still bring them. They're still good. They are still a formidable threat. Your opponent can't ignore them. They cause too much havoc. They're able to hold objectives. They kill too many people. You can't ignore them if you're the enemy. If you do, that's stupid. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed the discussion on Heldrakes and how 7th edition has affected them. If you wish to join in on the discussion of the differences between Defilers and Soul Grinders and which to bring, click on the link below. It is in the vault. You do need to be a vault member to watch that video. If you aren't a vault member, I encourage you to sign up for a seven day free trial to the Mini Wargaming Vault so you can see that video as well as all of the other Mini Wargaming videos that are in the vault such as the narrative campaigns, the painting tutorials, and the battle reports, and just all the fun behind the scenes and randomness that you get. You really do support us when you become a Vault member. I wish to thank you again. Leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Heldrakes, what kinds of combinations you've used with your armies. Those are always good. I always like reading those. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Gaming's Reign of Chaos!